Oh, Amanda, Amanda, my precious, sweet, irresistible, darling Amanda. I gaze at you in adoration, bewitched by your captivating beauty. Everything about you is exquisite. Oh, oh, your hair arranged in casual disarray. (laughs) Your superb body makes my heart pound with passion, Amanda, as I gaze down at you, kneeling, kneeling at my feet. I know, I know, my darling, I know as you kneel there... You have something to say to me. Tell me, tell me, what are the words that tremble on your sensuous lips? Twice I've had to scrub these steps, I'll kill that cat. Mr. Ted Partridge from the Midlands has claimed that for the last 25 years not a single word has passed his lips. How's that? It talks down his nose. And a whore, and a whore, and another whore, and a whore. We ain't tell him, put him all before. I tell him better. <laughs> did you hear the one? I did. I'll tell you another. Okay. Did you hear the one about the Irishman who stole a calendar? He got 12 months. <laughs> For sale, large friendly Alsatian and 12 pairs of trousers with the bodies ripped out. <laughs> now I shot it from my last heel. I can see right up your nose, you know. <laughs> Do you know, when somebody says they can see right up someone's nose, it gets right up my nose, pal. <laughs> right. At the annual reunion of shy and embarrassed people last night, nobody turned up. (laughs) That's pathetic, that. Do you know something? People who write jokes like that get right up my nose and all. In fact, everybody on this flaming show gets right up my nose. I wonder if he means me. And welcome to the Hammersmith Palais for the Formation Dance Championships. You join us just in time to see the East West Midlands Whoopee Cushion Manufacturers Formation Dancers. <laughs> Superintendent Davis, please will you tell the court in your own words what happened? Yes, sir. I went out, sir, dressed as a woman, sir, to try and catch the phantom bag snatcher, sir. He pounced on me in the park. There was a bit of a scuffle, sir, and I understand we are now formally engaged, sir. (laughs) We interrupt this programme to bring you a special message from the Lord Mayor of London. Has anybody seen me tea? (laughs) I'm giving a banquet in ten minutes and I can't find me tea. (laughs) And welcome back to the Hammersmith Palais for the Formation Dance Championships. As on to the floor come the West South North Midlands High Speed Yodelers Formation Dancers. Have you heard it's in the stars? Next July we collide with Mars. It was sooner than you thought, Paul. And I've lost me teeth again. <laughs> and the latest West End success is a play written by a professor of geometry from Cambridge University. It's called The Eternal Triangle, and it's on at the Octagon Theatre, Russell Square. <laughs> near the Oval. Next month, it moves to the Round House, where I believe there are still seats available in the circle. <laughs> and we've just heard that Frank Sinatra has arrived at Heathrow Airport and he's in our VIP studio waiting to say a few words. So come in, Frank. Has anybody seen me tea? <laughs> How can I sing my way without me tea? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> 
I know a dark, secluded place, a place where no one knows your face, a sip of wine, a fast embrace, it's called Billingsgate Fish Market. <laughs> I've had my eye on you all week, lad. In all my 25 years in the British hobby, I have never seen anything quite like it. Look at you. Just look at you, boy. What are you? Look at your top buttons under and your hair's halfway down your back. You are a disgrace to the hobby. And the way you walk. Poncing about like some effeminate Jesse. Just who do you think you are, boy? I'm the new Nuffy girl. <laughs> And welcome back to the Formation Dance Championships at the Hammersmith Palais. As on to the floor come the West South Midlands short-sighted window cleaners formation dancers. <laughs> he was a great baker with our dad. He was a good carpenter and all. I can remember when I was a lad. He made some shells for bakery. He, they were beautiful shells, they were. All rubbed down and really highly polished. Forty-three years later, them same shells were still there. Aye, forty-three years after he'd fixed them shelves to the wall, them shelves are still standing. Mind you, bakery fell down day after he put them up. Love of my life, my devotion. <laughs> Tell me, Kermit, do you find me attractive? Oh, I could guess. Well, do you think I have personality? I like it. Yeah? Oh, Kermit, you say the nicest things. Yeah, I was only thinking last night, Miss Piggy, how you ought to be on my favorite television program. Oh, my precious, you don't mean Charlie's Angels. Mm, no. Oh, oh. It must be Wonder Woman. Hmm. No. Oh, tell me, tell me, Joy of Joys, what program am I suitable for? Yeah, uh, pig in the middle. <laughs> Take that, you dumb, stupid frog! <laughs> Passionate little devil. Good evening, madam. Welcome to the Grumbleby's Lonely Hearts. If you want the lonely kidneys, they're upstairs, and the lonely livers are in the cellar. What's that, madam? You don't like my moustache? I could say the same about yours. <laughs> now, before you join, I have to ask a few questions. Have you been married before? Twelve times, huh? You must be the woman with the drip-dry wedding dress. <laughs> say, how many children have you got? Twenty-two, I see. Twenty-two children under seventeen, and a husband under sedation. <laughs> What's that? Your husband has run away from home. I guess he's grateful he can still run, huh? <laughs> Incidentally, I think I know your house. It's the one the stalks are picketing. <laughs> so, I see. Now you're looking for a new husband, huh? Okay, how would you like a millionaire with a house in Mayfair? A villa in Portugal, two Rolls Royces and a private golf course? You would, huh? Well, if you find one, let me know. I'll marry him. <laughs> and what's the recipe for today, Jim? You may well ask, little Raimondo. However, we are delighted, you see, to have on the prog the famous foreign chef, Herr Lacker. <laughs> and what is he going to say to us, I ask myself? Well, we'll find out in two and a half mins, starting from... Thank you and hello again, mine and Heron and mine kippers. <laughs> Today we are going to make the flatten on the round and pancake. 
So, first, we make the batran. So, we need a big bucket and the mix and open the batran. Oh, oh, dear, the wrong bucket. We have put the butter in the wallpaper paste run. <laughs> Dip it in the finger and... Whoa, the taste is good. And so, so we leave now. We leave the butter to stand in the bucket for three days. <laughs> so we will use the time for making the cherry cake. And so we take on another bucket and bung it in the flour. <laughs> and then we bung it in the butter run. And we then bung in the eggs and, and we bung in the bacon and, and then laden and the rubber gloven. Oh dear. <laughs> Never mind, mixing in the rubber gloven. <laughs> ah, now the cherries. Cherries, visit. Cherries. Cherries. Where are you? <laughs> ah! On the grain in Borden. Open the box and, and voila. Oh dear, cherries floating in the washing open. <laughs> Never mind, pick it out the cherries, stick it in the cake and on the bogan in an oven. So, lighten the match in and voila! <coughs> oh, <coughs> oh dear, happen again, big and bangin'. Never mind them, it saves us having to eat and eat them. And welcome once more to Football Headquarters in London for more news on the FA Cup third round draw. Number 91. The National Health Transfusion Service. Number 43. Will play Bolton Waterworks. <laughs> well, the last time these played it ended in a bloodbath. <laughs> Number 84. Barnsley Cement Works. Number 79. We'll play Carlisle Concrete Company. A hard game, this. Both have a solid defence. Good morning, Mr. Goodgen. Sit down, please. Now head back and open wide. Ah, yes, I see the little blighter. <laughs> open wider, please, Mr. Goodgen. Ah! Wider, please. Ah! And wider still, please. Ah! That's better now, then. Let's have a closer look. Oh, yes, good heavens. I've never seen anything like it in all my life. Incredible. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Your lady? Your lady? Your lady, lady, lady? lady, lady. It's incredible in here. Mr. Gudgeon. Oh, look out, there's somebody coming. It can't be. It can't be. It is. <laughs> Julie. We saw a bit of fun. What a fun Oh, this is better than the film. <laughs> oh, you've got an orchestra in here. Hey, watch where you're banging them cymbals, pal. <laughs> I don't believe it. It's my favourite look in this jock and snowy. <laughs> Ooh, I never. Oh. It's a brass band under your tongue. I've never seen anything like that. Whatever next. <laughs> Hang on. Hold it, Vera. Hold it, Vera, hold it, Vera. Hello? Has anybody seen me tea? And how much about that then, guys and girls? Now, can you believe where Jimmy is this one and only one month? No, you can't. Now then, I will tell you, Jimmy here, the gaffer, is standing at the actual world-famous Red Square, Accrington. 
where it's being held this year's fabulous, fabulous Olympics, and I'm waiting to interview Britain's big hope, goodness gracious, the one and only Wilf Gasmas Grimshaw. In fact, I have been waiting here for three days, as it happens. <laughs> but here he comes now at last, the one and only Wilf. Well, well, son, I was about saying a fabulous, fabulous hello to all the guys and gals out there. Hello. Fabulous. What unbelievable breath control. Yeah. Wilfred, can I ask you, oh, son, why are you three days late? I've been training. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. I always knew you were dedicated. No, I was lost. <laughs> Well, that isn't difficult, Will Folsom. That isn't difficult in the old cross country marathon. This was in the hundred metres. <laughs> but how could he get lost in the hundred metres, Will? I went the wrong way. <laughs> Easily done, Will Folsom. Easily done. Yeah, yeah. But my coach has had a word with me about it. And what was the word from your coach, Will? I'd rather not say. <laughs> I think it was one of them naughty ones. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. Now, Will. Yeah. All the ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls want to know is, yeah. what is so special about these Olympics? Oh, yeah, well, yes, well, then, these are the gas mask Olympics. <laughs> now, this is hard to believe, or to believe, but believe me, the Jimmy Rear, Jimmy the Gaffer, has never heard of the gas mask Olympics before. Well, we hold them every four years. Oh, I see, dating back, I suppose, to the last century. No, last week. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, now, can you tell all the guys and gals what events you have been selected for? Yes, well, first of all, on the track, I'm in the up, skip and gas mask. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'm in the team for the 4x100 gas mask relay. Well, if I may say so, you must be versatile. No crackers. Because <laughs> in the relay race, you see, we don't have a baton, we hand over a gas mask. Yeah, I'm with you so far, Wilf. I'm with you. I'm with well, you. Well, last time, the man in front of me grabbed the wrong gas mask and dragged me 50 yards. Oh, <laughs> dearly Lord, dearly yeah, Lord. Well, and I liked it. Nothing I have heard, I have heard, would you believe, a little dicky bird has told the geezer here that apart from your track events, yeah. I have had the whisper, <laughs> understand, that you excel in the old swimming pool. I thought no one noticed. Yeah, I'm diving, Wilf. You excel oh. at the eye dive. Oh, that, oh, yes, that, I excel at that as well, yeah. My speciality is a forward roll with a triple gas mask, and my best mark so far is minus 5.9. You actually got an actual minus 5.9? Yeah, well, I wasn't concentrating. Oh, you mean you forgot to do a back somersault or something? No, I forgot to put my swimming trunks on. <laughs> goodness gracious, goodness gracious. Can I sing me song now, Jim? Off you go, old son. Right. One, two, one, two, three, four. I sing you a song called the gas mask song. The gas mask song. The gas mask song. I'll sing you a song called the gas mask song. The gas mask, gas mask song. Unforgettable. That's what you are. Yes, that music tells us that it's time to meet our old friends, Mr. and Mrs. Amnesia. And this week, the Amnesia family are having a musical evening. Right then, is every, uh, is every, um. <laughs> Is every oh you, you know dear uh, it means all of us uh, every uh, every little breeze no 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 <laughs> every uh, you know what they bury oh yes bones yes <laughs> that's it every bones is every bones ready to start this um uh, washing machine no no no, no 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 what we're having a musical uh, 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 oh it uh, mm. comes between tea and supper time indigestion no, no. <laughs> the paper no 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 the cat yes that's it is every bone ready to start this musical cat <laughs> yes now do you want me to play the uh... the joker oh no no it uh, has keys and makes a noise a key ring. <laughs> that's, 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 yes, yes. Does every Bones want me to play the key ring for this musical cat? What a good idea. Yes. 
Now, let's plan the programme, Dad. Uh-huh. Now, Uncle Arthur... Now, Uncle Arthur can go... Uh, Home. No, no. <laughs> no, no, he can go... Uh, and boil his head. Uh, <laughs> it comes before second. Oh, yes, twelfth. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> now then, you're going twelfth, Uncle Arthur. Off you go. Um, but Uncle Arthur's not here. <laughs> well, he was. When? Um... Oh, I forgot died. It was before he died. Oh. <laughs> There's only you and me here. Well, then, that's it, then. Just the four of us. <laughs> Who's the other two? The other two what, dear? You know, if you say there's four of us and I say there's two, that means there's three unaccounted for. <laughs> Well, they can just sing along in the chorus, dear. <laughs> Who can? The others. <laughs> they, they, they must be somewhere because mm. we've just counted them, dear. <laughs> Look, let's start again. There's you. Yes, and me. Yes, and me. And you. Yes, that's four. <laughs> well, um, who have we forgotten? The others. Well, you can count me out. I'm not singing a song with twelve. <laughs> well, maybe they won't come. Well, if they don't come, I shan't invite them to another. Right. I'll go twelfth, then. Ready? Ready, right. Right. Try to remember... Uh... <laughs> Uncle Herbert's birthday. No, no, no. The song, the song. Try to remember... Uh, uh, not to leave the door open? No, 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 no. They try to... Try to remember... Oh, they are... Oh, let's forget it. There's someone else waiting to use the phone box. Oh, I know. <laughs> British Rail Information, can I help you? Hello? 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 (laughs) Ah, hello, sir. Train inquiries here. Can I help you? Hello? (laughs) Hello, what can I do for you, sir? Hello? (laughs) Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ah, that's better. Had the mouthpiece to me ear again. <laughs> I'm always doing that. What information do you require, please? Can you tell me how many horses are running tomorrow in the 2.30 at Hay Dog Park? Horses? Because I want to put ten pence each way on Black Alley. I think you've got the wrong place, sir. No, he's definitely running at Hay Dog Park. <laughs> you've been put on to British Rail. No. I was put on to Flash Alley. <laughs> it's a hot tip from me milkman. Look, this is Victoria Station. This is Brian Illingworth. <laughs> Hello, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> What's right in Flash Alley, please? For the last time, this is Victoria Station. Have you got the sore throat, Victoria? <laughs> Trains! I don't know who trains it, <laughs> but the jockey's a little fella. Look, sir, I can help you if you want to go to Haydock Park. Oh, thank you. Right. Where are you setting off from? Here. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. And where is here? At me auntie. No, sorry, that's not good enough, sir. It's all you can afford. <laughs> OK, OK, you're at your auntie's. Yeah. So if you can manage to tell me where your auntie is, we can plan the journey. Which one? Auntie Mary or Auntie Hilda? I don't believe this. You see, they both live here. Right. So where's Auntie Hilda? With me, Auntie Mary. (laughs) And where's that? Great Yarmouth. At last. We're getting somewhere now. So you want to travel from Great Yarmouth? No. Why, sir? It's too long a walk to the station. Really? And how can that be? I'm in Newcastle. 
I thought you said your aunties were in Great Yarmouth. They are. On holiday. I'm looking after the house. Right. Newcastle to Haydock Park. Yeah. Now, I think you'll have to change twice. I've only got one pair of trousers. <laughs> Look, sir, have you got a pencil handy? I can't wear the pencil. <laughs> no, sir, for the train times. Now, I think I can sort you out, and if anybody wants sorting out, I think it's you. Right. Right, you leave Newcastle at 5.15 in the morning, change at Bolton, change at York, change at Norwich, change at Glasgow, change at Bradford, and you'll arrive in Haydock Park in plenty of time for the race. Well, that sounds easy enough, but I don't think I'll bother. Oh, what a shame. And why is that? I've just remembered. Flash Alley's a greyhound. <laughs> You've just been listening to Grumbleweed, Albert, Carl, Graham, Morris and Robin. The programme was written by Mike Craig and Ron McDonald and produced in Manchester by Mike Craig. Hey up, JR. Hey up, Bob Bobby. <laughs> hey up, Miss Ellie. Hey up, JR. Hey up, Pamela. Hey up, JR. Hey up, Daddy. Hey up, and City, JR. <laughs> Where's our Sue Ellen this morning, J.R.? I don't know! <laughs> hey up! Hey up, silly look! Who's this coming up drive yonder? My name is Terry Wogan. <laughs>